Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good morning, I, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, I do have a PowerPoint presentation which, in the event, uh, focusing on banking problems, which, given what has uh, preceded, I will not use. Um, I'm conscious of being the outsider, uh, the non-European, on this morning's uh, panels. I could have been included here in order to provide an outside perspective on uh, Europe's problems. I could have been included uh, in order to in inject a lack of realism, not being a European, not being uh, a politician, and I will try not to disappoint. It seems to me that we have heard uh, this morning why the European Union is in the throes of the most serious crisis in its uh, history. Uh, and I think Europe uh, is in need of even more ruthless truth-telling than uh, the previous speakers uh, have acknowledged. A European Union and uh, a single currency that were intended to make war in Europe unthinkable are, as we assemble here today, uh, tearing it apart. I think we are seeing all the worst uh, of, of Europe's instincts resurfacing. Uh, if you are worried about uh, the Golden Dawn in Greece, you should be. And I would submit that the reemergence of these uh, extremist politics uh, are not the result of any temperamental weakness of the Greek people, but they are rather a direct result of the policies that have been uh, followed to date. Uh, there is a, a, a sense in the media, and as far as I can tell in European discussion, that Greece is special. Uh, uh, Greece can have trouble forming a, a, a government. Greece can experience the rise of political extremism. Greece can default on its debt. Greece can exit from the Eurozone. Greece, after all, can have all manner of special problems. So my news for you is there is nothing uh, special about Greece. So far, uh, I think what we uh, have heard this morning are a, a, a set of constructive but partial and inadequate suggestions about what needs to be done in, in, in response to the current crisis. We need a, a European civil service. We need to streamline and increase the efficiency of the European Commission. We need to strengthen Europe's fiscal rules. There needs to be more uh, discussion of eurobonds, and we need to assume the result, which is faster economic growth in the Eurozone. Uh, that is a little bit uncharitable, perhaps, uh, but not much. Uh, the question, I think, is, is this really the best that you can do? So what, in my view, does Europe need? It needs to start by distinguishing more clearly what needs to be done in the short run and what needs to be done in the longer run, not focusing, for example, on long-run solutions to very immediate to very short-run problems. Today, I think Europe needs to uh, uh, focus on three and a half imperatives. Number one, uh, as Daniel Gross emphasized uh, earlier this morning and other speakers uh, have similarly emphasized bank recapitalization. Not just in Spain, not just with Banksia, certainly not with smoke and mirrors, not with European financial stability facility loans to governments, which will only worsen the situation, as we just heard, by transferring the uh, banking sector problems on, onto the public sector balance sheet, but through direct joint and several EFSF loans to 
uh, uh, national banking sectors. So uh, this is easy to assert. It's a little bit complicated to implement given uh, uh, the differences between the uh, structure of the Eurozone and, and the European Union. Given the amount of money that is going to be required for uh, effective bank recapitalization, but, uh, but it needs to be an, uh, an imperative. It needs to be a priority. Number two, sharp dramatic changes in, in the monetary fiscal policy mix to support aggregate demand and, and, and jumpstart growth. So every economist know, in the room knows exactly what I mean by that in terms uh, of, of specifics. It means that countries in, in Europe with fiscal space need to use it. It means more generally less front-loaded austerity and more back-loaded austerity. And it means more support for economic growth from the European Central Bank, which will, in, in, in due course, restart its securities market purchase program, hopefully sooner rather than later. Number three, it, it means a, a Marshall Plan for Greece. It means not more loans for Greece, but a foreign aid program uh, for Greece. The Greeks have done a tremendous amount uh, in terms of adjustment. They have made a heroic adjustment effort. They didn't get into this problem by their, themselves. They had, they had your help. They had the help uh, uh, of other European banks to enable uh, the excesses with, with which they're now uh, grappling. I, I, I think as with the Marshall Plan extended to Western Europe after World War II, aid can be conditioned on reform, and aid can be targeted in a way that strengthens centrist political parties. But I, I, I don't think that 10 billion euros uh, of European investment bank money, even le levered up, uh, is adequate to the task. And, and point number three and a half in, in terms of immediate policies would, of course, be it is important to follow through on those uh, structural reforms. That's my agenda for today. My agenda for tomorrow would, would be to put in place the common bank regulation, common bank resolution mechanisms that everybody is now talking about. That's a separate issue from the bank recapitalization, which needs to be done today. Uh, uh, the common bank regulation at, at, by the European Banking Authority and an adequate common deposit insurance scheme and, and resolution authority can be done tomorrow. And, and, and similarly, limited fiscal integration leading to fu some form uh, of eurobonds that can follow uh, tomorrow uh, as well. I, I, I think uh, to reiterate what needs to be done and what can be done realistically in the short run needs to be more clearly distinguished from the longer term uh, uh, agenda. Contra Mr. Triche, there will be no quantum leap in European integration. I don't think there will be eurobonds this afternoon, so it is important to be clear about what can be uh, achieved in the short run versus uh, what can be, be achieved in, in, in the longer run. Um, I, I, I'm a dedicated believer in the European project. I, I may be the best American academic friend that you, you, you have, but everything that I, I've heard this morning makes me fear that absent a, a, a fundamental rethink of, of which there has been no sign uh, yet, things are uh, going to get worse in Europe before they get better. So this may not be the appropriate venue for ruthless truth-telling, but I ask you, if this is not the appropriate venue, then what is? Thank you.